friends, this is Tuesday, October the 8th, and Tuesdays are my typical uh, day in the life vlogging style videos. So that's what this video is going to be. But I do have a few clips of th some things that we did earlier in the week that I will go ahead and uh, put on this video as well. The first clip you're going to see is an unboxing of a beauty box from Walmart. And instead of telling you more about it right now, I'll just let you watch that clip and we'll talk about it after. I wanted to share with you a, I guess it's technically a subscription box. I do not currently subscribe to any boxes because to tell you the truth, they're kind of pricey. But I found out about this subscription box from one of my, our fellow YouTubers, Amy from Too Blessed, and it's the Walmart Beauty Box. And they send them out four times a year seasonally. And technically the boxes are free. All you have to do is pay for shipping. The shipping is a flat rate of $5. So if you, you can either look at it as it was free with $5 shipping, or it's $5 for the box with free shipping. <laughs> But um, this is the box. This is the first time I've, like I said, this is the first time I've ever done this. And for some reason, some unknown odd reason, they sent me two. Now, I don't know if they are two of the exact same thing or what's going on. Olivia is hoping they're two of the exact same thing so she can have one. But I'm sure whatever's in here, I'll end up sharing the stuff with her so she doesn't have to worry. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and see what we've got inside. I'm gonna go ahead and just open up both boxes at the same time, so I know if they're exactly the same or not. I know I didn't get charged twice, so I'm not sure why I got two boxes. Well, so far they look exactly the same. This is what they look like when you open it up. It says, hello, sunshine. I think this is technically the summer box. I'm not sure. Yep, they're exactly the same. So Olivia is gonna be thrilled. So if there's anything in her, in her box that she don't want, I, I can use it. All right, so let's see what we've got here. I'm just gonna show you what's in one box because like I said, they're exactly the same. First thing we've got is a Bic Soleil uh, sensitive razor, which is quite funny because Olivia just told me, Mom, can we get me a new razor when we go shopping? So now she's gonna have two. I don't need this because I have a different shaving system that I use. Um, so she can have two razors. The next thing is Bioderma. What is this? Sensible, my eyes are not great on small print. Oh, it's makeup um, remover. Oh, makeup removing solution. Cool. It's a pretty good size bottle. Olivia usually use make, uses makeup wipes, so I'm not sure if she's going to be interested in this. What do you think? Are you interested in that? I'll probably try it. Okay, so she gets one bottle, I get one bottle. Okay, this doesn't even really look like a sample to me, because no, normally these are not full-size items. This is a brow kit. I have never, ever done anything with my eyebrows other than I get them waxed when I go get my hair done. And this has got a eyebrow palette. I don't think this is for eyebrows or eye, eyelids. Yeah, it's, all, it's all for eyebrows. For eyebrows? Mm. You put powder on your eyebrows? Some people do. This is the pencil. It's sort of like a wax and it helps keep the brow hairs in place and then the powders can fill in your eyebrows and what if you want to just use it on your eyelid it would probably work hmm. well i guess olivia's gonna have to do a tutorial for me on eyebrow stuff because i have no idea what's this thing oh that's just the brush yeah it's to comb your to comb eyebrow. your eyebrows then what do you do you use this pencil mm -hmm. and then you can use the color I'll probably use the color on my eyelid because I love eyelids because I love that earth tones and I don't my eyebrows are usually covered by my glasses so it has a highlighter too for your eyebrows well under your eyebrows oh I don't know nothing about this stuff 
So cool. We can, we can practice our eyebrow stuff together. Then it's got here a detoxifying mud mask. Cool. I love face masks. That's, that's neat. And let's see what else do we have. A sample of Nivea aloe vera body lotion. So far, have you been getting the same as me? Yep, exactly the same. The only difference is the razor are different colors. Oh. And then we've got Biore Witch Hazel Ultra Deep Cleansing Pore Strips. Cool. I don't normally have too much trouble with clogged pores, but maybe Olivia might use these. Interesting. And then the last stuff in the box are just some more information about the products that are in the box. Cool. Well, that was fun. I Like I said, I have no clue why I got two boxes, but I did, and now Olivia can have one for herself. So I seemed quite clueless in that unboxing about the eyebrow thing. <laughs> because I was and I like I said I'd never done anything with my eyebrows other than I get them waxed every six weeks and that was it and so I was very clueless with that but I have been kind of playing around with it ever since I did that unboxing and so I have my eyebrows done today I don't know if you can tell the difference I can kind of tell the difference but so yeah just one more thing to add to my beauty regime <laughs> when I put my makeup on but it really doesn't take that much more time and it's kind of kind of a little extra special thing there so yeah you learn something new every day don't you the next clip is going to be of Scott Travis and Olivia helping out our outside dog Bo now let me tell you a little bit about Bo Bo was originally my dad's dog. Um, he's always been an outside dog. He was born on this property and he has never been in the house. Well, by the time my dad has gotten, he's had some health problems and he's lost some of his mobility and he has bad back problems and things like that. So he has pretty much given up all of the animals and doesn't garden anymore and those types of things. He does a little bit of gardening. So all of the animals that were my dad's, just kinda, we inherited them. So the goat used to be my dad's and now he's ours. We claim him because we take care of him. And that's the same with Bo and Bear, the two outside dogs that used to be my dad's dogs. But because he's an outside dog and he runs around and he's on all kinds of terrain, his nails naturally keep uh, filed down so we don't have to worry about it except for his dew claw and we noticed that his dew claw was really long and it was growing it was starting to curl around and puncture his uh, skin on his foot and he was starting to limp a little bit so Scott ordered some nail crip trimmers we have nail trimmers but they're for our dogs and they weren't big enough because Bo is a bigger dog we also um, ordered a muzzle because we didn't have a clue how Bo would react to having his nails trimmed or his dew claws trimmed and that um, area on his foot medicated or you know treated. So this is the video of um, them working on Bo's uh, foot. It's okay, Bo. It's a good boy. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's all done. Did you check the other ones? His other feet while you got him? It was pussy too. Oh, poor buddy. Mm -hmm. Poor buddy. We want to spritz some peroxide on it. Well, he's not going to enjoy that at all. Peroxide doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah the Tony is bleeding too. No, his foot's bleeding, which is probably good because it could just be the Tony. Right? Yeah. 
It's okay, Bo. It's okay. Good boy. Good boy. I'm afraid anything we do isn't gonna. Oh, good boy, bro. Probably feels good too. You're so good. Getting that thing out of there, it was. It was grown in there that far. Oh, poor buddy. Yeah. We didn't need that muzzle. Yeah, it's better safe than sorry. You never know if dogs are gonna do. Didn't know it wasn't gonna do. We'll just have to maybe keep an eye on those dew claws now and yeah, let them do that again. Yeah, keep an eye on and make sure that redness and swelling goes down. Then on Saturday, Saturday was a very, very full and busy day for us. We got up really early and went to an auction. And I haven't been to an auction. I had been to an auction one other time many, many years ago. So it's been a really long time since I've been to an auction. And so we went to the auction. We didn't buy anything. Um, everything that I was that caught my eye went for really high prices. So I must have I must have an eye for things that people want because <laughs> yeah, the stuff I was interested in went whew, through the roof. And I had already made up my mind. I you know I said dollar amount. This is what you have to do when you go to an auction, so that you don't get caught up in it and spend way more than you intend. You put an, a dollar amount in your head and say, I will not spend more than X amount of dollars for this item. And you bid until it reaches that. And if it goes above it, then you let it go and you let someone else get it. So that's what happened uh, with a couple of things that I wanted to bid on. They just went sky high. So we only stayed there for a couple of hours. Then we came back home and um, there was a garage sale sign and so we grabbed Olivia and we went over to this garage sale and it said on the sign huge book sale and Olivia loves books and she especially loves old books and this place was amazing it had like a small shed that I swear they had turned it into a library because the entire shed had bookshelves built onto the walls and they were it was just you I couldn't believe the amount of books that were in this building and they were selling all of the hardback books for two dollars and all the paperback books for a dollar and so Olivia found four books that are old and hardbacked and so I'll just show them to you really quick most of them I don't know a thing about this one's called Now Voyager by Olive Higgins Froughty And let me see if I can find the copyright date on this. Reprinted in 1943, copyright 1941. So that's an oldie. Then she got this one, short stories from English history. I think it's a um, school book, like a textbook for uh, students. And this one is, um, Copyright 1902. I don't know if that's the year this particular book was printed, but that's when the, wait a minute, no, it was printed, this printed, this edition was printed in 1902. The original copyright date was 1897. Well, there's an oldie. So this one is called Rhymes of a Red Cross Man by Robert W. Service. She just likes these books because she likes the, the um, patina or whatever you might want to say, the way the covers look on these old books. And she's pretty intrigued by the writings from way back when. So let's see, what's the copyright? This one's copyright 1916. I know it doesn't that doesn't mean when it was originally printed but that's what the copyright on this book says 1916 and it says to the memory of my brother lieutenant Albert service Canadian infantry killed in action in France August 1916 so that's pretty cool and then the last one that she picked up 
pretty nondescript. It says sonnets and other poems. And is this Shakespeare? All of it? Is it is it all just Shakespearean poems? Yeah. Okay. So these are all Shakespeare poems. And the date on this is 1908, but I know Shakespeare was before then, so. But look, it's pretty cool. So those are the books that Olivia picked up. And then I saw one, and the title of it uh, uh, grabbed my attention. And so I picked it up and I flipped it open, and the very first thing I read in it made me laugh so hard. And I'm like, I have got to get this book. It's an old book, and this one says, Grow Thin on Good Food. That's the title, and it was written by Luella E. Axtell, M.D. And it was, um, the copyright was 1931. It, well, 1930, and then a reprint in April of 1931. So that's, I'm assuming, what this book was. And let me see if I can find the paragraph that I read that made me um, just laugh. It is all about how to be thin, you know, how to lose weight, how to keep keep weight off. And a lot of, I was just, I've been kind of browsing through it. I haven't sat down and just read it straight through, but. A lot of the things that they say in here are, you know, I can agree with and we still, you know, adhere to today, but some of the things they believed were just absolutely hilarious. And some of the some of the terms and things that are used in this book would be kind of offensive to heavier people these days. So let me see if I can find that paragraph. Okay, found it. It's talking about fat, like consuming fatty foods and different fats. So let me just read this paragraph really quick. And it's, it's the only thing I'll read out of it, but there were so many things in here that was hilarious to me. Okay, if you're eating more food than you can at once burn, the unburned animal fats and grease of the diet are not turned into human fatty tissue but plaster themselves on your body layer by layer in the identical form in which they are eaten. Each kind of fat retains its distinctive character so that in time you become literally part cow, part sheep, part pig. Think of it the next time a brown morsel of fat smiles at you from your plate I am sure it will look less seductive to you. So I thought that was hilarious. They actually believed that if you eat pork fat or whatever, it does not change. It just stays pork fat and it layers onto your body. And that, you know, if you're eating a bunch of that and you carry in some extra weight around, then you're actually part pig or part cow. <laughs> This thought, oh my goodness, that was so hilarious to me. So I just had to buy this book and I flipped through it and I've read some things that really make me chuckle. But yeah, it was funny. So it was worth $2 for the chuckle to get that book. So a little update on my job. Yesterday was my first day and it was a good day. It was a bit overwhelming to me. Um, she was just, I was just being trained on the cash register and how to, you know, process um, transactions and things. And it's so different. <laughs> the last time I did that type of work, like retail work, or it wasn't even retail, it was working in a store where you had to do, run a cash register, was when I was 18 years old. So a long time ago. And the cash registers nowadays are basically just computer programs. There's no like actual keying in of the amount. It was, you know, like you scan the barcode and then you make sure it's the correct price. And the, yeah, it was a whole like pro procedure of how to do these transactions on the computer. And yeah, it's a little overwhelming to me, but I know I will figure it out and I will learn it. After I've done it a few times, 
for me, I'm the type of learner where I'm like a hands-on learner. I learn it best if I'm actually doing it. And um, I, she had like a practice program on one of the computers and so I was practicing a little bit yesterday. And I, got, I have the like vague idea of what I'm doing, but I, it's not really cemented in my brain yet. So I know that when I learn all of that, I won't feel so overwhelmed. So right now I'm just feeling pretty overwhelmed with it, but I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be good. I think once I learn it, I will like my job. So it's not like I didn't like it yesterday, I just don't like this overwhelmed feeling. It makes me feel like, I'm the type of person that I'm very hard on myself and I want to learn it like right now. I just wanna go into this job knowing everything I need to know and just do my job. I get very um, critical of myself if I don't learn it as fast as I think I should. But my boss is just like, don't worry about it. You will not be completely trained for a year. It takes a year to learn everything about this job. So I keep thinking, okay, it was day one, day one of 365. So I still have 364 days to learn this. So yeah, but it's gonna be good. I think it's gonna be fun. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the day that I'm no longer feeling overwhelmed and confused. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So just continue to pray for me. Pray that my brain, this brain who has not done this kind of work for a really long time, learns it quickly. <laughs> and that I am not so hard on myself. All right, let's get on with this day. As you can see, I started off the day as, a, as hoodie weather. It was 43 degrees when I went for my walk this morning. Oh, that's another little bit of footage I wanted to show. The other day, it was such a beautiful day. It was so gorgeous. And so I took a couple pictures during my walk and I took a little video of my walking companions. I have friends that join me on my walk. So I will put that video footage here. Okay, so what I was saying is it started off 43 degrees this morning when I took my walk. I was actually a little bit chilly and I had a, a jacket on, but by the time I was halfway through with my walk, I was warmed up. And uh, so anyway, I, I had my hoodie on and now it's starting to feel a little warm in the house. So I think I'm gonna take this hoodie off and get busy in the kitchen. my um, countertop cleaned off a bit and I'm gonna go ahead and light this candle I bought this at Dollar General oh, a week or so ago and it's one of those wood wick candles and it crackles like a fire when it's when it's lit and it smells really good too pumpkin spice I love this candle I do need to trim that wick though before I light it and then this humongous cabbage that's another thing we did on Saturday after we got back from the garage I well, actually went straight from the garage sale over to the pumpkin patch and you'll be seeing that video I did a totally separate video about the pumpkin patch that'll be coming up sometime um, I think maybe Saturday I'm not sure what I have when I have it scheduled but I got this huge cabbage there so I need to be doing something with this cabbage today um, I don't know chop it up and blanch it and put it in the freezer I guess so that's what I, I need to get done today. And then this little guy, this is a Parmesan cheese sh shaker. I was looking for a cheese shaker at Walmart and they didn't have any. 
So I went on Amazon and they had a bunch of uh, cheese shakers that were just plain, you know, plain glass. And I saw this guy and I thought he was so stinking cute. And it was, you know, basically the same price as the others that I saw. So I went ahead and picked him up. And I'm gonna put our nutritional yeast in this, Olivia and I. Um, we use it like Parmesan or on spaghetti and things. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the nutritional yeast in here so that we can have our own little cheese shaker. I just thought he was so cute. He's a little bistro waiter. his little home now. I didn't fill him all the way full um, because we we don't use it every single day and I don't think it'll go rancid sitting out. It just says on the bottle to store it in a cool dry place and it's cool and dry in the house but I did put the rest of it in back in the refrigerator so we'll just put keep a little bit in this guy at a time to use whenever we have Anything that we want to taste like cheese, we sprinkle that on. It's really good. And he looks cute sitting on the table. All right, friends, I'm in my car, as you can see, and I'm on my way to uh, get my monthly massage. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and close this vlog out here. Um, I know I have a lot of footage from the last few days and so I don't want this video to be too terribly long so I will close it out here thank you so much for spending the day with me or at least the morning of this day and snippets of the past week I hope you've been enjoying uh, vlogtober I almost said vlogmas <laughs> vlogtober so far I have been enjoying filming it and as one last reminder um, if you want to ask me a question for my Q&A video that I'm going to be filming soon don't forget to leave it in the comment section below I'd really like to get a couple more questions I've had a few but I'd like to get a couple more just so that the video is um, not too short and is interesting thanks so much for watching friends and we will talk to you later bye bye